Welcome back guys. This is week two of our express van build. If you missed last week, we managed to do the sound deadener, install two Max Air fans, we did the whole floor, and a swivel seat. So we're gonna try to keep up the momentum this week, and we're starting with one of the things that we are most nervous about, which is framing out these walls. So the reason we're pretty nervous about trying to frame out the walls in here is that nothing is quite square, nothing is very uniform, and all of these wall panels that we need to put framing on have kind of different angles and even different depths. So this comes out a little bit further than this. They're not the same. Now, don't get us wrong. We can always throw a bunch of wood at these walls and force them to be flush. But the trick is trying to find a balance in between making them flush and not overdoing it with the amount of wood. One, the price, and two, it's gonna weigh down your van. So we're gonna try to frame this out using the least amount of wood. Okay, so the plan is, is that we have went ahead and ripped our four by eight sheet of half inch plywood down to these two and a half inch strips, and we will be using these for our framing. We wanted to go with something a little thinner because the walls are not straight, and so we need something that can flex and bend to the angle of the van. So we'll be using this half inch plywood for most of the framing, and we've got two by sixes to be used for some other parts. Hey! pretty good yeah so we bought some liquid nails so I think we'll just kind of slap it to the other side of this and screw it into these beams So if you've been following our last couple of videos, you might already know that we are at a makerspace, which is basically, it's kind of like a gym for creative people where you can sign up and you pay a monthly membership fee and you can use all these nice facilities and tools. And we haven't actually shown, while we've been building, we haven't shown the inside of one of the best parts of the makerspace. So we're about to go use their miter saw and that is in the wood shop. So I think we've got a strategy for the upper framing bits. We're using the two by sixes and we're cutting them to length to fit in between the struts of the van. It is really hard to get anything flush. So this is kind of the best way we can do it for the, the top angled bits. And we're using two by sixes because we do need them to be kind of sturdy because we're gonna be mounting overhead cabinets in those locations. So we have the first two ends. So we're gonna go around and finish the rest. If you did not watch our last video the reason it's so dark is because we're in Salt Lake City in July and it's very hot in the middle of the day so we've kind of gotten accustomed to working through the night and then sleeping through the day so that's why we have such bad lighting we've been out here working all night and we didn't quite make it as far as we thought we might on framing the walls we knew that this would be tricky but we didn't quite realize how long it would take us to get it just right we made some good progress, so we really can't be too down about it, but we will pick you guys up tomorrow and we're gonna continue working on framing the walls. So we're back out here again. Last night, we were able to finish a couple of the horizontal framing pieces, but we have a couple more to do tonight. Namely, we need to worry about the bed framing, which has to be really precise because we're planning on storing our bikes underneath the bed in the garage area. So you think we can fit two of these? side by side and then a water tank and also batteries and stuff yeah probably not much else but probably not much else <laughs>
stable already. Now that we have all of our horizontal beams installed, we've been working on figuring out what to do for the vertical beams, and we tested out one piece by installing it already, and it looks like that's gonna work pretty well. We have pocket screws connecting it to the top, and then we have some wood screws in the middle. Before we can finish installing all of the vertical support beams, there's one more thing we have to do that Jimmy's got that just came in the mail today. So here's our insulation where we skipped out on on the floor, we're making up for in the walls and ceiling. So this is 3M Fensulate. We got the 40 foot roll, and I think it should be pretty easy to install. You just cut it out and then adhere it to the walls and ceiling. Uh, I think the only question is, is did we get enough? And uh, I guess we'll find out together. So the Thinsulate we're putting in now comes packaged where it's about an inch thick, but once you install it and over time it'll expand to about three inches and it's supposed to be really good for additional sound deadening and it has a pretty good R value. I think the one we bought is about a 5.7. So the insulation's looking pretty good. The reason we're leaving this open, we've hinted at it before, but we're going to be installing a window here so we don't actually need to insulate it. Well, we just officially finished putting up the Thinsulate, and I think we've made it almost impossible to see anything in here because we're working throughout the night and the outer edge of the Thinsulate is all black. So uh, you just can't really see anything. It echoes less. That's true. They uh, advertise the sound deadening part a lot on the packaging, so I'm kind of eager to see what that'll be like when we start driving. We had way more left over than I thought we did, so Natalie's going around stuffing the extra pieces into all the crevices that she could find. I feel like I'm like squirreling everything away. Like it just, it feels excessive at this point, but it's addicting trying to get every little inch insulated as much as we can. And for those of you worried about the wires and the plumbing, we are still planning on doing those, but we wanted to get the insulation in first so that we could run all that stuff like towards the inside of the van, just so that the cables and plumbing are also insulated. So what we're gonna do is have bump outs on either side of the bed so that we don't have to trim the mattress down any more than we have to. So for that, we need a way to attach the shiplap to this section, to the bump outs. So the idea is we're gonna attach these separate uh, support pieces at an L here. Um, but it's just becoming a little difficult just because of the curve of the van. So we're trying to figure that out. But I think once we add it here and we need to add it on the other side as well, that'll pretty much complete the entire framing of the walls, which is pretty crazy to say. Um, we did spend way longer on this than I had hoped, but um, honestly, a lot of that was cutting the insulation. This stuff is so thick to cut and you can do it with normal kitchen scissors. But if I were you and I was using the Thinsulate, I would probably try to get some heavy duty or at least brand new scissors because uh, I think we gave ourselves uh, quite a few blisters trying to cut through this stuff. So it is morning, we work through the night one more time. I think we're gonna leave this for tomorrow, or which I guess is tonight. Uh, our sleep schedule is like all over the place now. But uh, yeah, so I think we're gonna call it here. We're gonna try to finish this up tonight and then hopefully, well not hopefully, we're gonna do it. There's one more big thing we're gonna try to do uh, before the week's over. Also, I believe in our last video, we promised you guys a bit of an update about what our actual layout's gonna be. So stay tuned for that. We definitely haven't forgotten. We're gonna kind of walk you through what we're thinking about doing with the space in here. We are back for another night of work. Let's get this bed cubby framed out. So 
what we're doing is we're using these two and a half inch framing pieces and we're just using a generous amount of wood glue and nailing them into the side of the vertical beams. And that kind of forms our bed cutout behind me. And uh, really this only gains us about two inches on either side, but when you do the measurement from the metal beam to this metal beam behind me, that's about 76 inches. And so save half inch on either side for the shiplap and that equals 75, which is the exact length of most mattresses. So as long as we don't mess anything up, we should be able to fit a mattress in here perfectly. So you might have caught that we're nailing these, which is not usually ideal when you're working with a vehicle. Ideally, we would want to use screws, but we're out of screws and it's the middle of the night, so we can't just run to the store. So we're using nails for now. I think it's time to do probably the scariest thing in the van so far. I know we keep saying that, but this time I really mean it. So we are going to go ahead and install the driver's side window tonight. In our research, a lot of people uh, with ProMaster, Sprinter, Transits, doesn't really matter. Most of their windows go on the sliding door side. And for the ProMasters, it's different because on the door side, the beam here is much thinner. And so you can actually just cut right through it. And so that was like one hurdle we had to cross was figure out um, how to remove it. Turns out it's gonna be really easy, but it's just another thing to kind of make us worry more than we should. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have to remove these tabs right here that are holding the, uh, the beam on. So I'm just gonna use metal shears and hopefully cut through them. I think they're just sheet metal, so they should be pretty thin. Oh, I don't think these are very sharp. <laughs> I think their work is working. It's just hard to get them. Oh. Yeah. It's just hard to get it into place. Ooh. All right. All right. Oh, it's working. <laughs> it might seem really silly that we were worried about that big beam, but it looks pretty structural. And to be honest, it came pretty close to stopping us from doing the layout we wanted to do because we just weren't sure how to cut through it. So we couldn't really find a lot of info on YouTube about how to cut through it. So we want to make sure that we put that out there if anyone else is having similar concerns. Uh, all right. Jeez. Uh. So now the only thing left is the foam uh, sealant that is holding this to the sheet metal on the outside. Wow. So I went ahead and measured about half an inch in from the uh, factory cut here. I just want to give plenty of room for the urethane to actually take hold. And uh, we're going to have a windowsill around this anyway. So I just don't want to cut the hole too big. If I cut it too small, I can live with it. So that's the plan. Um, I have these marked out. I'm going to go ahead and start drilling pilot holes. And then we can kind of stencil out the cut from the outside. One semi frustrating thing about this window install is that we ordered a window and a window install kit, which comes with all sorts of stuff. What it does not come with is instructions or a template, which would make this so much easier and take a little bit of the stress away. I mean, I think we'll be fine without them, but like, come on, it would be so easy to have a stencil for this thing. Oh boy. Are you sure? I, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. You got this. This is the right window, right? <laughs> it's gonna be. Whoa, okay. You startled me. Well, I like to triple check everything, so I'm gonna go outside and make sure everything still looks good. You can see a little hole. Oh no. Oh. So it'll be about that tall. Okay. It's really tall, don't it? That's such a perfectly good panel. And we just put a hole in it. Top and 
cut the middles out. So we cut everything, well we, Jimmy cut everything except for the middle of the bottom and the top, just to keep it really stable. So we'll cut those last and then take the, win uh, not window, take the metal out. So I'm like an inch away, so it's really close. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. That's it. You got it? You got yeah, it? Yeah, I got it. I can't, I don't really want to hold it without gloves. Totally. Yeah, I'm going to support it, but mm. should I take it down? Yeah. You just got to not scratch the side. Yeah, perfect. Whoa. Whoa. That's a hole. That's a hole in our van. to dry I think it needs about three hours so we want to hang around and keep an eye on it for a little bit before we head out but before we leave we promised that we would show you kind of the layout or what we're thinking about having as our layout for the van this might change and not everybody's gonna agree with what we're doing but here's what it is you basically come in right here you're gonna have the kitchen it's gonna stick out just a little bit we we'll probably have the cooktop over here and the sink on the other side. As you come in over here, we have already installed a nice swivel seat for our driver's seat and this window. So for the big reveal of what we're thinking of this area, I'm sure you could guess, we're gonna have a table right here and a bench that will be pretty tall, pretty much gonna match this height. And so this whole section up through about this far is going to be a two person dinette. Now later we would love to install a swivel seat for the passenger as well. So if we had company, we could turn them around and kind of open up the space. Um, but that's on the back burner, definitely in future plans. So moving on, this will be the back of the dinette. And up until about here, we're going to make what Jimmy and I have been affectionately calling tiny couch. This would be the perfect space for a shower and a bathroom with like fixed walls, but we just don't want to block off the space like that. And I think we can get by without a shower. I know a lot of comments have disagreed, but we're going to try it. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll let you know if we regret it. But for right now, this is going to be our couch, which I re realize is ridiculously small. And then back here, I think this is the only part left, will be our fixed bed, and underneath will be our garage storage where we're gonna keep our electric e-bikes stored. Um, so the bed's gonna go from here until all the way in the back, which is a little bit shorter than a normal full-size bed. We're saving about 10 inches that we can keep for the living space, and I think that this will be plenty big enough for us. It's way bigger than a twin, it's just a little bit smaller than a full. And then over here, it loops back around into your kitchen area. We aren't exactly sure where the overhead cabinets are gonna go, but you might be noticing there's one thing I haven't really mentioned, which is a toilet. We are planning on installing one underneath the dinette seat up here and then having it on slides to pull out. And we're just gonna kick each other out of the van whenever we need to use it. So it's gonna be a little bit rougher than our bus build, which had a fixed shower and bathroom, but we're ready to evolve and downsize. And I think that's just a sacrifice we're gonna make. So let us know what you think of our layout in the comments. It's not too late to make changes, and I'm sure you guys probably have a lot of good ideas on this. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye! <laughs>